Welcome to Travis Park Church in San Antonio, Texas. We believe that all are welcome and love is the answer to hate. Well, good morning, church. We're so glad to be with you this morning. It is a beautiful day, and we're incredibly fortunate to be spending this time, even virtually, with you. And we also have our senior pastor, Pastor Eric. Good morning. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning, church. It is so good to be together uh, in the house of the Lord uh, together virtually this morning. I'm, I'm so glad, and it's our prayer that wherever you are this morning, that uh, you know that God's love is for you and that you have an important gift to give to the body as well. And so uh, we want to help you connect and share those gifts in whatever ways God's leading you. And so if you put a comment in the um, here in, in Facebook or YouTube, if you'd leave a comment, just let us know that you're watching and who you're watching with uh, and anything else that you're thinking about or asking questions about. But also go to travispark.org slash contact, and that will help us to get you connected with our email list or Realm or uh, other things that we're doing. So there are lots of things happening. There's more and more things happening in person uh, around the church, including a week from now. So um, we just look forward to getting you connected, and, and we're glad you're connecting this morning. comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 15. As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. This is my commandment, love each other just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I don't call you servants any longer because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends because everything I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you could go and pr produce fruit 
and so that your fruit could last. As a result, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. I give you these commandments so that you can love each other. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Friends, will you pray with me? God, you are mother and father to us all. You have been our Alpha and Omega, our roots and our wings in every generation. Forgive us, God, for the ways our love has fallen short. Heal the wounds we have from where others, even our closest family and friends, have fallen short in loving us. Thank you for the height and breadth and depth beyond all measure of your love. Use this time, God, to grow that kind of love in us, that we would not see ourselves as laborers, only good for or noticed for the work we do, but that we would see ourselves as you see us, that you call us your beloved children, that we are made for true friendship with you and with one another. Amen. The dude abides. We read from the Common English Bible translation this morning. Uh, thank you, Betty. And it uses the word remain throughout this passage. But other translations like the New Revised Standard Version, the NRSV, use abide in place of, of remain as a translation. And so verses 9 and 10 in the NRSV read, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I've kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. And so thinking about this passage this week, it had me thinking, what does it mean to abide in the love of Jesus? What, what does it mean just to abide? And as I thought this week about this passage and what it means to remain in God's love, to abide in God's love, I kept thinking of the movie, a 1998 movie, The Big Lebowski. Big Lebowski is probably my favorite Coen Brothers film. Uh, it, it did come out in 1998, so I'm dating myself, I'm sure. Uh, you may not have seen it, or you may have forgotten by now, so I'll give a quick recap. Uh, just like uh, youth director Alex, she got to do so great with Harry Potter a couple of weeks ago. Um, the, here's the way that, that, that it goes. Jeff Bridges, uh, and I think we have a photo. It, you, can, you can see the two kind of main characters we're going to talk about. Jeff Bridges plays Jeffrey Lebowski, who is, uh, he goes by the dude. And the dude is this bathrobe wearing, white Russian drinking slacker. He doesn't seem to have a whole lot of promise to be our hero, and yet hero he is. The story has lots of twists and turns, but basically there's this case of mistaken identity where the dude gets wrapped up in this fake kidnapping of Bunny Lebowski, who is married to this rich mogul also named Jeffrey Lebowski. And so thinking he's the other Jeffrey Lebowski, this gang of thugs come to rough the dude up and they pee on his rug. And when the dude says, hey man, don't, don't, don't do that, man. The thugs say they don't care about anything that they, they identify themselves as nihilists. And so the dude goes on this quest with his bowling buddies to get a new rug from the other Jeffrey Lebowski. And he ends up suffering greatly through all these endeavors as he tries to restore order and good. The movie opens with this tumbleweed rolling through early 1990s Hollywood. And this character we later come to know as the stranger, I wish I could do his voice, I couldn't do it justice. This Character we come later to, to know as the stranger, as you see in the photo at the bar. Uh, the stranger is played by Sam Elliott, uh, iconic, and he has this voiceover in his deep, slow cowboy voice. The Marlboro Man was talking. This is what he'd sound like. Also dating myself. Elliot, the stranger says to start the movie, I'm talking about the dude here. Sometimes there's a man who, well, he's the man for his time and place. He fits right in there. And that's the dude in Los Angeles. And even if he's a lazy man, and the dude was certainly that, quite possibly the laziest in Los Angeles County, which would place him high in the running for laziest worldwide. But sometimes there's a man. Sometimes there's a man. That's how the movie starts. And what makes the dude the man throughout these zany misadventures of this story is that he keeps going in standing up for what's right, come what may. 
He gets called this unemployed burnout bum by the other Lebowski. He seems sort of apathetic on the outside, but we find out that he's actually passionate and committed in contrast, right, to this gang of nihilists who believe in nothing. It turns out that the dude is persistent about resisting the wrong that's been done to him and his friends. It turns out that the dude will go anywhere and do anything in order to make things right again. The dude is everybody's friend, generously kind, especially to his down and out and socially awkward ragtag neighbors. And what's his reward for all this? He gets beaten up multiple times, insulted, terrorized in his own bathtub with a marmot, uh, knocked out by both a spiked drink and a thrown coffee mug. But the dude keeps going for the sake of righteousness and out of deep care for his friends. The dude's zen-like ability to maintain patient peace and calm against such great odds and suffering, this, 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 this sees him through. We come to the end of the movie, and in the, in the dude's home away from home, which is the bowling alley, uh, again, he runs into this cowboy at the bar, played by Sam Elliott, the stranger. And the stranger asks the dude how he's been now at the end of the movie. And the dude says, you know, strikes and gutters, ups and downs. And then the stranger says goodbye. Take it easy, dude. I know you will. And the dude's last line of the movie comes back. Yeah, well, the dude abides. And the stranger ends the movie then with this monologue, the dude abides. And he says, I don't know about you, but I take comfort in that. It's good knowing he's out there, taking it easy for all us sinners. Kathleen Falsani writes about how uh, super fans uh, have, have made something called dudism following after this, uh, after this movie. And she writes that dudism is grace. It's unexpected kindness, unmerited goodwill, giving somebody a break that they don't deserve, showing up in commitment to your team even when you don't feel like it, hugging it out instead of slugging it out, she says. It's enduring hardship for the sake of your loved ones. Dudism. The def dictionary definition of abide is to wait patiently, to endure without yielding, accept without objection. But when I think about abiding, I think of the dude. And I think of this passage where Jesus speaks to the disciples in John chapter 15. He says here to the disciples in this last teaching, this last gathering, the last supper before his execution, he says to the disciples, abide, remain, abide in my love. Whatever happens, whatever you go through, abide in my love. He says, I remain in my father's love. And my love stays with you so that you can remain as well. And your joy, Jesus says, will be complete. Love one another, he says, just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this. Here he is about ready to go to the cross. No one has greater love than this, he says, to give up one's life for one's friends. It may feel like losing your life, but it means finding it. It means being raised to new life. And so keep going, Jesus says. Keep going. Rest in this knowledge. Remain. Abide. Let this truth find a home in you. Find an abode in you and you in it. This abide, this is a word that I need, that we need. These words from Jesus are words that we need from the one who loves us as father and mother. This word helps lower my blood pressure. Helps tamp down my impatience. But as soon as Jesus has said this in John chapter 15, Jesus then says something that makes me anxious again. He says, you are my friends if. You're my friends if you do what I command you. I thought all this abiding in love and joy and peace, I thought all this was unconditional, that that's what makes it grace, right? And now there's an if? Come on, Jesus. Only if I get it right, then I get to be your friend? I don't think that's the, what Jesus was saying. 
think a better way to read these words from Jesus would be to say, the ones who do what I command, that is, love each other as I have loved you, the ones who do that, that's how you know that they're my friends. The ones who are giving up their lives for their friends. You who give up your lives for your friends, following me, strengthened by me, you're doing it knowing that I call you friend already. And I've modeled this for you. I've equipped you to do it. I'm your partner, Jesus is saying, in this sacrificial, courageous work. I'm your companion, Jesus says. And the way that we know that this is what I think he's saying is that he says then, I don't call you servants. I don't call you servants. I call you friends because I've shared everything with you. You know, in my spiritual life and maybe in yours, it can be easy, I think, just in, our, in, our, in all of our lives, our spirit and our soul, our body, and our families, all the ways that we're connected, it can be easy to think of ourselves as servants. And God can seem like a master, maybe, a good one, maybe, but, this, but God can sometimes seem like this strict and demanding master who loves us according to the work that we do. My friends, I need you to hear today that that is not true. That's not who God is, and that's not the God that Jesus uh, knew his Father and reveals through his love. God loves us, and God delights to give God's self for us. Because we, as we sing sometimes, we are friends of God. We are made to be friends with God and with one another. And God delights in loving us and laying Uh, Jesus delights in laying his life down um, out of love for his friends. You know, during the pandemic, we've heard a lot about this term resilience. Resilience is the, the ability to abide, to maintain, and to bounce back through all the hardship. We are resilient people, and we've shown that over this last year. People are creative, innovative. Here we are in a new studio space in the church. We're creative to find, and we're, you're, all over the place, not just in San Antonio. People are creative to find new ways of doing things. Workers are resilient and will put up with a lot. Our systems and our cities are resilient. They can handle more than we thought possible. Kids are incredibly resilient in these anxious and unpredictable times. And moms, moms might be the most resilient of all, doing all the things momming so hard, even more than before, homeschooling and trying to maintain some healthy kind of normalcy in the home that is suddenly more crowded, holding on to a job, protecting kids both physically and emotionally, putting on a good face for others, even when there's turmoil inside. But the problem with the language of resilience, as many have said, is that it can be a way to simply communicate, well, aren't you great for putting up with so much challenge and even abuse? It makes a hero of the ones who survive being crushed instead of calling into question the systems that do the crushing. It can be isolating, this idea of resilience. It seems to sort of say the strongest, most resilient individuals, they are the ones who kept it going under incredible pressure. And the ones for whom it was simply too much, well, I guess they weren't resilient enough. And I think the abiding that Jesus is pointing to here, I think this abiding is different. It is resilience, but it's resilience in relationship. The resilience of friends who are holding on together. An interconnected web, a support system that doesn't have to just be resilient by its own individual capacity in each place. Where one spot is in danger of failing, the others step in to be the resilience for that place of vulnerability. We can abide in Jesus' love, he says, because Jesus remained in the love of his true parent first. We can lay down our lives for each other because we are friends and we have friends who will do, who have done the same for us. We aren't servants who toil alone under conditions that would break anyone. We, in Jesus, we are a community of resilience, a community who is abiding together. 
And so on this Mother's Day, I I, I want to just acknowledge that mothering can be lonely work, especially in a pandemic. And it's much easier, I think, to feel like a failure. And I feel it sometimes as a dad. But it's much easier, I think, to feel like a failure, overwhelmed by the task of parenting, rather than seeing yourself as one of the resilient ones who everyone else makes themselves out to be. Sometimes, if we're honest, I think we haven't been the mothers and the fathers and surrogate parents and adoptive parents and anti-godparent guardians and teachers. I don't think this is just about biology and family of origin. We haven't always been the parenting figures that we're called to be, the mothering ones, who we want to be and who we want to have. Sometimes we've been overwhelmed. Sometimes the ones who are supposed to mother us in the way that God does, sometimes they've fallen short. Maybe because of their own overwhelming circumstances. Maybe because of the lack of a support system of comadres, we need more than compadres. Maybe they've fallen short out of their own lack of good models. You know, even right now, some of you are having to act as mothers to your own mothers or to someone else's kids. Or you're grieving the ways that you can't do that mothering work or receive that mothering work in this time. And I just want to say today that God sees and holds your burden. That you don't merely have to be a, you don't have to merely be a servant. You don't have to be resilient by yourself on your own strength. Friends, I believe that in Jesus' lead and and as Jesus abides with us and helps us to abide in God's love together, I, I believe we can build an abode together. We can We can be made friends by Jesus' kind of generous love. And we can learn to remain in that place together. I I can hold on when you all help me hold on. We can hold on when Jesus helps us hold on. So that's why it's a gift and a necessity that we do this loving like Jesus thing as a community. Abiding is something that I believe we can only do together. No one abides alone, not even Jesus. He knew the never-failing love of his parent. I'm so excited that we're going to be in person together uh, in worship in the sanctuary next week. And I hope whether you're new to Travis Park, you found us online, there are lots of folks like that out there, or you're coming back, uh, I, I pray that being together um, physically in that space, it will go beyond saying hi and a reunion with masks at a distance. But I I pray that some physical proximity will help us to remember how we are called to abide together in love, even through all the tough stuff. And I'm also glad that at the same time, we'll be continuing this online worship that can connect people wherever they are. I've been, uh, you know, in this online time too, I think we have to work even harder, right? not to feel alone, but to work at connecting, at work at helping others to connect, work at abiding together, to recognize that we need people. If we're going to be resilient, we need people, whether those people come to us through a screen or not. I've been so blessed to have both colleagues, other pastors, and people here in the church community, in Travis Park, uh, like the Social Justice Sunday School class, these people who, even when most of our meetings are on Zoom, that being with them has helped me to hold on. I'm so grateful for those relationships, and that's what I want for you. Alone, we can't carry the burden of this kind of love. But with loving friends who God puts in our path, with friends like Jesus, we can abide. The dude abides. For all us sinners. And that, friends, is good news worth sharing. Amen. Pastor Eric, thank you so much for your message in abiding. Um, it, it, you know, it makes me think of, of an analogy that, that another pastor I, I, I know of gave of the analogy of a plane, right? So we're all 
familiar with hanging out on planes. We don't have to flap our our (laughs) arms around to fly on a plane, right? When we're in a plane, we just abide. Yeah. Someone else is gonna take you there. (laughs) Thank God. (laughs) So uh so I I'm so grateful for your your message of abiding and and um and I'm glad to be able to abide together. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Travis Park Church. It's so good to be with you this Sunday morning as we continue in our worship and our prayers together. Uh, you can go to travispark.org slash contact and submit those prayer requests online. Uh, we take those prayers seriously, and each and every week we have prayer circles pray over those prayers, especially on Wednesday night with Cortisone, with Phil, with Catherine, with James and Morgan, who gather in community with our friends and, and say the prayers of the church. And uh, we really want to stay connected with you and have that sacred time uh, in community. So you can go to travispark.org slash contact to submit those prayer requests. Hey, on this beautiful Mother's Day, we have a special opportunity for our prayer to be read and said by Caroline and Kevin, who have a beautiful prayer for us this Sunday morning. Almighty Lord, Heavenly Father, Mothering God, Beyond our understanding, yet from deep within our hearts, we cry out to you. As your beloved children, we bring before you all that we are, sorrow, pain, hope, joy. Compassionate God, console those denied the chance to celebrate Mother's Day, the abandoned, the separated, the disappointed. Bring us all together as your family of faith. Sustain those who mourn loved ones, for whom today is a day of grief. Comfort us with the wellspring of our memories. Unifying God, inspire us to advocate for peace, and guide us to see the part we can play in creating harmony in this world. Reconcile us to each other, that we might embody your forgiveness and live as one. Bountiful God, kindle in us a celebration of the diversity of all families, of all shapes and sizes, of all colors and faiths. Teach us to grow in compassion and understanding, remembering that even with our differences, we are all your children. Nurturing God, encourage us to share in the joy and effort of making healthy, peaceful communities open our hearts to reach out to our neighbors in charity and acceptance. Mother in God, beyond our understanding, yet from deep within our hearts, we reach up to you. Take us up in your arms and heal us. Bend down to us and feed us. Wrap us in your bands of love. Glory be to you, O Lord, Your comfort and care know no bounds. May we rest in your abundant love, which nurtures us from age to age. Amen. Amen. As we continue in our prayers together, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, and the words are on your screen, and we'll say it together. Our loving God, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Caroline and Kevin, for that wonderful prayer. And uh, we have now a time of reflection where you can go to travispark.org slash give and give your offering or your tithe or your pledge online. And there's various ways you can learn to give online, text to give through our online platform, or you can learn to uh, mail in your offering. But, you know, here at Travis Park Church, uh, we have we believe that there are many ways to give and you can give through your uh, your tithes. You can give in through your money, but also through your time and through your volunteer service and through your prayers. Everyone, and I mean everyone, has something to offer and add to this amazing community as we grow in our love of God together. So in this time of reflection, go to TravisPark.org and learn how you can get 
part of this beloved community. Hey, before we close out on our worship service online, we have a few announcements for you. And uh, hey, we'd love for you to stay connected to our Travis Park community. If you are interested in becoming a member or part of Travis Park Church, uh, you can go to travispark.org on our Facebook page, or you can learn to follow us at info at travispark.org. And that's our mailing list. And so there's many different ways you can stay part of Travis Park Church. Hey, reach out to us too if you want to place membership. We would love to talk uh, with you with a pastor and say how we can be a part of this journey of faith together. Hey, right after this service, there is Zoom coffee hour, which uh, is a time uh, where you can gather around uh, virtually, uh, grab a cup of coffee or a drink and uh, meet with people who just experienced this service. And that link is online and it'll be just right after this is over. You can click on that link and join in our Zoom coffee hour. Hey, there's Sunday school happening. Those links are going on right now if you want to join us also for Sunday school. Hey, Edie's class, a special class that's been meeting at 3 p.m. on Sundays. It usually meets every Sunday at 3 p.m. And But on Mother's Day, they're not meeting, but it will be back next week as they continue in their wonderful discussion about mental health and staying healthy uh, post-pandemic or during this pandemic. Hey, uh, again, your attendance and prayers can be tracked at travispark.org slash contact, and you can join our online community of Realm so you can stay connected with us and learn all the different ways and subgroups that you can get involved with online. Hey, scholarships, if you're a student and you're seeking a scholarship through the scholarship committee, those applications are due May 23rd. You can go to travispark.org, and basically you can guess it, slash scholarships, to learn how to apply. Get, that, get those applications in before May 23rd's deadline. Hey, here is some cool information. We wanna spend some time talking about this this Sunday morning. We are so excited to announce that uh, in-person worship is going to happen again on May 16th. A virtual worship will still be happening at 945 on Facebook and YouTube, but we will be offering at the same time uh, in our sanctuary, in-person worship. Uh, you can uh, join us in the building and we'll have help for information in our newsletter about where to park. You're going to park in the city uh, garage across the street and we have validation tickets for you. Or 
If there's still space in our parking lot right next to Travis Park Church, you can park there. But please do not park across the street where we used to park in Travis Park Plaza or all you'll have to pay. All that parking information is found online and in our newsletter. Also, we want to be very conscious that everybody has their own decision to make. And uh, we want to respect everybody's opinion. So again, virtual worship will still be offered and you need to make the best decision for you and your family. And uh, we will honor that. But we will have some protocols in place. Uh, we will require temperature checks. We'll require all people to wear masks and we will physically distance in our sanctuary. And you can also use the balcony if that is best for you. Sanitizer will be available. Uh, we won't have much hangout time after the worship service is over. We'll have safe ways to do communion. We are going to learn this new normal together. I hope you are patient with us and also feel free to, to send us any comments that you might have that will make your experience even better. And uh, we know that we're trying something new. And so uh, we just want to know that we're gonna honor everybody, but we're excited to be offering this opportunity for those who can come back, you know, with vaccinations more common and mask and social distancing really working. We wanna try this and feel like it's appropriate after a few attempts, you know, outside at the good kind uh, facility and other ways we did in-person events throughout the pandemic. Again, we were going to try this out. There might be some things and changes that we make in the future. But again, on May 16th, you have an option to come to the sanctuary and participate in in-person worship or join us online at the same time. Hey, there are announcements. We really want you to be part of Travis Park in any way you feel best. And so thank you for joining this Sunday morning and have a great week. Well, church, we want to thank you so much for spending your Sunday morning with us. Um, wherever you are, um, what I think is very exciting, Pastor Eric, is that in a, in a week, for a lot of us watching online, where we are uh, is very likely going to be right across the hall in our sanctuary together. Amen. That's very exciting. Uh yeah, thanks for however we do it. Thanks for being a part of how we abide together. And, and we get to taste that a little bit in this time. And I'm so excited for what God has for us as we keep uh, in Sunday morning worship and in so many ways working to abide together and to invite others into the good news that God abides in love with them as well. And so, um, yeah, just thanks for being a part of that and, and helping us to build that kind of home, that kind of web of support with each other. Um, you know, I know that uh, a day like Mother's Day uh, can be full of blessings and celebration and thanksgiving, and it can also be a day that's full of uh, grief and, and lots of challenges. And so um, pray that you have people that are abiding with you in the midst of all that and that you're knowing God's love in those places, especially um, today. So uh, again, do go to um, travispark.org slash contact, and uh, we look forward to, to staying in touch and hopefully seeing you either in person or online next week. I, I think it's incredible that um, over just a year of having an online presence, which, re which really isn't something we've been doing before then, right? Um, it, you know, uh, we have quite a few of you who are not in San Antonio or not accessible or, or just don't feel comfortable yet coming in person, which is totally okay. Um, this conversation, this community online, it doesn't go anywhere. That's right. We persist, we abide together in our beautiful sanctuary or on our laptops That's right. <laughs> or phones. That's right. I love when I've, I've gotten to meet with or talk with people who have never physically been in this space because I think it helps us to remember that church is bigger than a building, right? We say it, we sing it, but it's true that our connection, our abiding um, is, is bigger and beyond uh, what any structure could hold. And so it's really fun to connect with people, um, maybe that they can never uh, be here physically uh, proximate with us, but but that we get to connect um, through God's spirit. And it's pretty amazing to me. Amen. Let's sing together our closing song.
I'm praying for you and ask that you're praying for me and our church as we all abide in God's love together today. And so hear this word of blessing as we go. May God who gave birth to all creation bless us. May God who became incarnate by an earthly mother bless us. May God who broods as a mother over her children bless us. May Almighty God bless us, Mother, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. God's people said, Amen. Amen. Go in peace.